Hello and uh, good morning once again. I think it's already quarter past uh, 9 a.m. So we should be starting uh, together with me on my team is uh, Dorothy, who will be taking us this uh, well put topic on communication skills. Today I know we are having a lot of challenges with communication, especially bearing in mind a lot of us are working from home, others are still going to the office, and for consulting, most of you work off-site, like you don't work from one singular location. So I'm very excited this morning to be able to take you through this particular topic. Uh, we've reserved the last uh, 15 minutes of the session. That is at 11 a.m. for any questions that you might be having. Uh, can you mute your microphone if you're not talking? Yes. So as I was saying, uh, we'll reserve the last 15 minutes of this particular session for any questions uh, you might be having on this particular topic. At this time, uh, I'll just welcome Fidelis to give us opening remarks, then hand it over to Dorothy. Karibu sana, Fidelis. Fidelis? Good morning, everyone. All right. Hey, Purity. Good morning. Hi. Hello. Hello. We can hear you, Fidelity. Oh, Purity. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm saying uh, thank you so much yes. for the time that you've given uh, us. And I understand some people are having problem trying to log in, but at least most of them are somewhere where, where they can already listen to what we are saying. Okay. So you can kindly proceed. And right. I would like to welcome everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Fidelis, uh, for that. Uh, I think I also did not introduce my name. My name is Kiri Tuanjiro. I'm the director for Atirex, Leadership and Management Consultants Limited. Uh, we are a HR consulting firm. Uh, we do a lot of training, just like the one we're about to do. I believe most of you or some of you we've interacted with before when we were doing the Saturday classes. I remember consulting at one point they had sent a group of uh, people to attend some of our classes. So I'm very excited to also take you through this particular topic of, on communication skills. Uh, together with me, as I had earlier said, is Dorothy. Dorothy, kindly take it over from here. Thank you, Purity. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I think we, we, I'm still, as much as we've been in quarantine and corona times for this long, I'm still adjusting to the not seeing people face to face, you know, the touching, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, we have adjusted. We are adjusting. This, I guess, is the new new normal. Um, it, it, the communication is still going on at the end of the day. Um, it, the, the the topic today, she, as as, she, as um Pirit has said, is communication skills. But I thought I would put a bit of a twist on it and call it effective communication because you everyone is usually communicating at every given time we all have the skill i mean we were born communicating from the moment you came out of your mother's womb you communicated something either you cried and they said you were okay or you didn't cry and they said something was wrong some of us who are born you know with our umbilical cord around their neck i'm one of those people so we were always communicating even from the moment we started as a communicator, I, it is important for me to introduce myself. I know that some of you are wondering, this chick has just come and started talking. My name is Dorothy Laguna. I am a consultant at Acurex Leadership and um, Leadership and Consultants. And um, I'm also a lecturer at Daystar University. After this, I have a, a lecture that I'm doing. I, I, I lecture many topics. I teach on communication. I teach anything as long as it is not accounting or, or, or economics. 
mimi nitafundisha uh, i think uh, they say if you don't do you teach i don't know why if that applies to me or not so effective communication um just as we are starting the, 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 the discussion i think just as an icebreaker many of us have been working from home what has let's utilize the chat please i can see it i can see um, I, I i can see it at the corner of my screen just as an icebreaker tell me what are some of the things that you have been doing while working away from home to stay focused you know to make sure that your your concentration is focused on your work there are a lot of distraction distractions at home what are some of the things you've been doing to reduce your distractions even if it's not at home you know when you're out on the field and you want to get down and sit down and work there are many distractions what are some of the things that you have been doing to stop those distractions mm. what has been helping you you can utilize or someone can unmute themselves and discuss we are not that many I've, I've attended some trainings during this period where we are like 4,000 people. That one for sure they couldn't unmute people. But this one we are about what, 15, 16 people? Maybe 20, I haven't checked the number. You can unmute yourself and say, one of my distractions here, I have two cats, purity knows. Sometimes I'll be in the middle of a class teaching and then my cat decides it wants to walk across the screen. You know cats like attention. Any, anyone? Even one person, tell us what are some of the things you've done to keep you focused. I've been putting my phone on airplane mode. That's very smart. That's very smart. We're very addicted to our phones. Um, I, I, I think I will try that <laughs> one of these days. I think I'm constantly I'm on the screen. I'm on my phone. That's a nice one. Thanks, Sammy. Someone else? Two more um, people. Yeah. Hi. I could say mine. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, oh, my name is Teresa. Yes. So what I've been doing, I've been making sure that um, I have like a small routine. Like I mm -hmm. wake up in the morning, I shower, I get out of bed, and then mm -hmm. I have I have now I have like a, a work area. So I make sure that that is where I am working from. Because now I've noticed um, with with working from the bedroom, maybe you start, sometimes you start napping, you start going to Instagram. So the moment you have a specific place where you've already segregated to just say this is your workspace, even the mind just stands and um, knows true. that it's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that. That's true. You have to put up a place aside, even if you you live in a self-confused home, you know, that's what they call it, like it's a one bed sitter. You can always put aside a corner that is specific for, for working. It helps. It helps you to focus. Polycarp is saying muting WhatsApp chats, no notification mm -hmm. pop-up. That's another very smart one. Um, even Facebook, even Instagram, you know, some of you have put notifications for all of them. So there's constantly something popping up all over the place. You, you can mute all of those. Thank you for that. Um, all of these that we have mentioned are distractions to communication. When, you, when we are working at home, when we are trying to email, you're trying to make a phone call. I think I was watching, there was a, a, a um, they were showing some of the Zoom, this Zoom um, challenges. And there's a particular gentleman who was, I think he was reporting on the news. And no, 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 he was on a Zoom meeting. And his, his girlfriend was in the background and she had just come from the shower. Now here is the twist. She was not only, she wasn't, he, he actually is married. That girl who was in the background was uh, not his wife. He was, she was his colleague at work. So when people at work are seeing the colleague in the background, walking around, who is, as in it's obvious, they had not come to do like a meeting. She was clearly naked. And they know that he's married. And the wife also saw because she was also a colleague at work. So he, that guy, I don't know how his life is right now, but um, yeah, those are some of the challenges of working at home. Um, what is the importance of effective communication, especially at times like this? Um, here are some of mine. If you have any, you can always write them down on the chat. But 
um, I usually, before we go into these ones, I usually think about communication as the lifeblood of a company. If your blood is not flowing in your body, well, if there is like a, a blockage, like for example, if I take a rubber band and I tie your arm here, after a while, what will happen, the blood will stop flowing to your hand and your hand will go green and blue and purple and die and fall off. You will have to chop it off. It means that blood was not reaching that part. To me, blood, um, communication is like the blood of a company. If you ever get to a point where your department is not receiving communication, with time, what will happen is you're going to become redundant and they go, they're going to chop you off. Because if you're not working with the rest of the company, what's the point? So what is the importance of effective communication? Number one, Effective communication helps and helps to understand a person or a situation better. Effective communicate. Some of us have a challenge with communicating effectively. So, if you are not understanding the other person, you are creating a problem. Some of us have problems in our lives that could just be solved by sitting down and communicating effectively. It enables us to solve the differences, build trust and respect in an organization. Some of you, there's someone in the office or in the company that you just don't like for whatever reason. And if you ask, if someone asks you, you say, or oh, that person is, you know, this, that, or the other. And you've never sat with this person, you don't know. So communication, effective communication helps you to understand people better, helps to build trust, help to, helps to build respect. Sometimes our message is misunderstood or we misunderstand the received message. Effective communication helps us to resolve problems with both. Um, sorry, uh, let me just close this. this. Okay. Uh, with both points of view. Effective communication helps us to connect well with colleagues and teaches us and, and, and colleagues, teachers, and parents. Right now, especially you, since the kids are at home, I, I, I'm wondering the people in the kids in shards what they have been doing all this time. Well, the news has told us what is happening, but at least I'm imagining the ones who have children here, the kids have been going to class online. And then, of course, it helps us to make decisions. Is if there is any other that I have not mentioned, feel free to add it on the chat. So, what causes ineffective communication in our organizations? Language differences, of course, especially if you are. I looked at your website and I saw that you're in five countries. A language could be one of the challenges that you might be facing. I'm not sure. Um, information overload there are some people who just bombard you with so much information especially like now someone might decide to send you 10 emails back to back and you're like oh my goodness which one am i to address first and which one am i not um in attention lack of attention right now there are many distractions of course in the in the house or wherever it is you're working remotely uh time constraints can also cause pressure i know of someone who if they're put to the, there, there's too much pressure on them, they freeze. They can't work, they can't communicate, they freeze. So you actually have to go and help them and tell them, okay, calm down. What is the, you have to help them now prioritize their work so that they are able to navigate once again. Then there's noise distractions, complexity in organizational structures. I think this is a big one in many companies. It, it, it depends on, Every company has its corporate culture. There are cultures where if the boss has not said, I, I don't know about your organization, if you fit in one of the ones that I'm talking about, then you know what to fix and what not. But there are organizations where unless the boss has said, nothing moves. So if, if all you have to do, if you ask someone to do something, if you ask them for, it's a bureaucratic culture. If you ask someone to do something, they say, did the boss say, no? Okay, I'm not giving you this pen. So a lot of things get held back or communication gets blocked all over the place because communication has to come from one place. In other places, it, it, it has to follow a certain hierarchy. You can't go to the senior so-and-so without going through the junior and sub-junior, and then now you get to the senior. So there's 
there's those levels also. In other companies, it's laissez fair. Everyone does things the way they want. You know, you are, the, especially in creative companies, like where people are artistic, you know, it's companies where everyone is pretty much running their own show. If you decide to call a meeting, it's very difficult to bring these people together and for them to sit down and discuss because they're used to being their own boss. So complexity and organizational structure can be another one. Poor retention, some people are just, it comes through one ear and goes through the other. They just can't retain a, in general, especially, of course, it depends. With, with grown-ups, it's, it's better. But with the, I'm a lecturer, so I deal with teenagers a lot. The attention span is two shillings. You can't, they can't, you, to get them to focus is very difficult. Um, I'll jump through the others, the linguist, linguistic impact. Oh, sorry, I've skipped. Perception differences, semantics, physical, emotional, psychological, gender. There are some, some even today, they still, challenges with gender inequality. I don't know if you saw at some point, was it last year where there was this, there was a lot of this happening. I don't know. I hope you can see what I'm doing. You saw this a lot on Instagram. I think it was the day of gender equality in the workplace and people were doing this a lot. And I was wondering, what is this? Type if you agree with me, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, there was a lot of this going on on Instagram, on social media. People are doing a lot of this. Did you see that? Anyone answer me? Did you see the whole yes. thing? About, yes. Um, it, they, they, there was a whole discussion about gender equality, that men were making more money than women in the workplace. I think it still happens up to now. Uh, so now if there's a challenge with gender equality, then even the way people communicate, a man can easily tell a lady, I, I, I hope that does not happen in companies these days, but a man can easily tell a lady, who are you? You're a woman. I once worked in a company like that where I was the boss and the person who was directly under me was a, a man. And according to his culture, um, a woman is like a chicken. He literally, literally I, if that is your culture, you know who, what I'm talking about. Women are considered like livestock, like chicken. That's what he said. So he, I'm here coming as the boss telling him to do things and he's like, this chicken is telling me to do what? So I use, I really struggled. Eventually he had to be let go because he, you are my second in command and I'm trying to tell people to do something and you're not passing the message on because you think you're the one who's the boss, you know? That was a challenge. And of course, culture is the final one. Again, if there are any that I have not mentioned, please, please feel free to mention. We've already discussed the barriers to communication. You've mentioned the ones at work. Um, we've already mentioned many as we go along. Now, this issue of communication is um, a complex one. I say it is complex because we all communicate differently. There are many factors that affect how we communicate with each other. Um, there are four main actually factors that I know of that, that affect how we communicate. One is our, our needs, another is our environment, another is our, um, is our emotions, another is our experiences. How, how we have experienced in the past, how people have communicated to us in the past affect how we communicate right now. But because it is a complex issue, I find that the most complex issues in life have, can be simplified with simple solutions. I don't know if that makes sense. Like for example, this issue of Corona, the solution is a simple one simple one in terms of like what they say for us to do for us not to catch it. It's simple things. They say, wash your hands, social distance, um, wash your hands, social distance, don't touch your face and eyes and stuff like that. But somehow when you're told not to do it, it becomes complicated. You become all of a sudden, if you remember when it first came about and they would tell you, don't touch your face. All of a sudden you want to scratch your nose. All of a sudden you want to touch your eyes because the, the, the problem tends to complicate the solution. 
if that makes sense. Someone was saying probably the solution to corona, you will find it's a very simple thing. You'll find that probably it's just a hub somewhere that we have not yet discovered. It's probably something just as simple. Um, so most complex problems or more, most complex, complex issues have simple solutions. So we'll look at the seven C's of effective communication. Then we will look briefly at email communication and then I will be out of your hair. That's okay. So those are the seven days, completeness, conciseness, consideration, clarity, cons, uh, on concreteness, courtesy, and correctness. Let's look at each one. And at the time, if you have questions again, feel free to mention them on the chat. Number one is completeness. Some of us have a challenge with giving complete information. I will give you the basics of giving complete information. I use this a lot, the five W's of communication. Maybe I can just type them that here very quickly. The five W's of problem solve, five W's and one H. I'm, I'm sure you guys know about them. What are those? Who? what, where, when, why, and how. I sometimes I call them the five wives and one husband, if you like, it, whatever helps you to remember them. You can use them in problem solving. When you're writing a, a news story, for example, it, it is very important for you to cover all of those. The five W's and one H. When you're giving information, the challenge with many people is when they are giving out information, they leave out calls. So that causes a break in information. Someone asks you, send me the report for yesterday's work. You say 10 people came to work and um, 10 people came to work and they finished work at two o'clock. What are you missing out of that information? For example, someone asks you, give me the, day re the, the day's report for yesterday. And you say 10 people came to work and they left work at 10 o'clock. That's it. What are you missing out of that information? Anyone can chip in. This is a report, by the way, that you're sending to your boss. What is missing out of that report? Anyone? Maybe I can go to the, the faces and ask. What, what what did they do do exactly? Thank you, Philip. Anyone else? What did they do? What else should I add to that report? Identity of the people who turned up. Yes, it's very important. What if something got lost during that day? You need to know who exactly it is who was irresponsible. So you've said what happened, who came, what else? You said when they came, they came in the morning and left at 10 o'clock. What else are we missing? Remember, we are covering the five W's and one H. What are we missing? How did they do their work? How was it? How was the day? The day was successful. The day was fruitful. And then you mentioned what are the challenges that were faced? And... Uh, why is it that they left at 10 o'clock? That's a very important thing. Or why was it that only 10 people came, maybe 100 people are supposed to show up, only 10 people showed up. So that is the how to send complete information. Many times we don't have effective communication because you did not give the complete information. Thank you, Philip, yes, who did what? Everyone had to have that. Sometimes, by the way, the, and I don't know if this happens in your office, but most offices, as much as we would like to think everyone works equally, the truth is that is not the case. There is always someone who works more than the others. That is why we have performance management. That is why some of us get promoted and others don't get promoted. Because the truth of the matter is some people are just better at doing more than others. Or other, some do more, but they don't do it well. Like you can give someone a place to sweep. One person takes their time to, to sweep. Someone else just comes and shua, 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 shua. If you come and you're like, really, this is the work that you said you did, but the person finished in two minutes. So all of those things are factors. So number one, C of effective communication is completeness. Number two, conciseness. 
conciseness means go straight to the point. I know especially there are some people who love the sound of their own voice. So they love writing big and long and complex emails to show that they are the ones who are most educated, especially you know, I, I, like I said before, I work in a university. There are so many people who want to show that I am the learned one. They use big, big words. Some of the most, the most effective communicators I can think of. Actually, let's have that discussion. Give me examples of some of the most effective communicators that you can think of. Mine is, my, my, my one is Barack Obama. Anyone else who you can think of? And for me, what I used to, I admire, well, I still do. The thing I admire the most about Barack Obama was when he, com when he communicates, he never used complex words. He never said I was discombobulated or you would hear I was, uh, you know, I, I was miffed or stuff like that. He used very simple language, but by the time he finishes talking, you feel, yeah, yeah, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. Obama has said. Give me one more example of a good communicator, and then we can continue. And then you say why. You can unmute yourself and just speak. Anyone? I see Monica. Hi, Monica. Good for you. You're wearing a mask. Monica Cheng. Tell me an example of uh, someone who you admire. Anyone? Who's, who is a, an effective communicator? Monica, can you hear me? Monica Cheng. The screen has frozen. Okay, anyone else who can give me an example of, uh, of an effective communicator that they know? I'm waiting for someone to say, uh, what's his name? Lumumba. And I beg to disagree. Patrick Lumumba. Do you think Lumumba is a, an effective communicator? Aha, uh -huh. Magufuli, very good. Straight, and then the thing about him is he's very inspirational. Whenever Magufuli speaks, his people, even you, you are Kenyan, but you're feeling like Kenyawe, it's not in TZ, it must just be here. Um, he, he, he has a way of speaking to his people that make him believe whatever it is he says. That's a very good example. Thank you, Polycarp. Okay, so go straight to the point. Don't use big words. Don't go on and on about nothing, especially in the corporate world. Go straight to the point. No one has time to read too many things. Next one, number three, consideration. Empathy, when you're communicating, don't assume that everyone is okay. Don't assume that uh, just because you are the boss, you, you are better than other people. Have empathy when you're speaking. Uh, consideration implies stepping into shoes of others. Step in the shoes of another person when you're communicating, especially when you're, commuting, you're communicating face to face. You know, read the person's face you can tell that someone is not okay. I mean, we're not made of stones. If you look at someone's face and they're about to cry, and you're like, at the end of the day, shauriake. See, we are here to work. If they, are, if they have feelings, shauriake. Take a moment and pause and ask the person, are you okay? Would you like a glass of water? You know, would you like us to have this discussion a bit later on? Especially those who are in HR, that they, they, maybe you're doing a performance management review or someone, for example, has always been coming late. You need to find out why is it, what are the challenges this person is facing? Um, why is it that they always, we used to work with someone who had a very bad body odor. And you know, it used to be so bad that it got to the point and it was a gentleman. You know, it's easier to speak to ladies than to speak to gentlemen about body hygiene. So what ended up happening the HR had to speak to one of the gentleman bosses to call him aside and speak to him. So when he spoke to him, he said, well, my home, we've been having challenges. The water has not been coming to our house. There were a lot of things. So they just sat with him and came up with a plan. And by the next day, the next few weeks, he was fine. He, 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 I mean, he wasn't smelling like roses, but at least he wasn't smelling badly either. So have empathy on people. The next one, 
The next 7C, it's num we're on number four. For those of you who are writing, if you are writing number seven, the number four C is clarity. Be clear, be specific. Emphasize on specific message, the goal, idea, one, uh, uh, one, uh, uh, the goal or idea at a time. One goal or idea at a time. Take things step by step, especially in the workplace. Be, you know, be clear. Say, say, I need people. But especially, for example, if you, if the dangers of not being clear. A good example is maybe you're making an order. You're making an order for marker pens, for example. If you are not clear, you're writing down an email and then you say, I want a hundred marker pens. If you're not clear on which type, on which color, what will happen? Me, the supplier, I will probably just bring marker pens that it could be permanent marker pens. It could be, you know, temporary. You know, you never know what the person is going to do. So when it comes to communication, you have to be very clear. I think that is self-explanatory. Then concreteness. Every communication in the workplace has to be based on facts. Don't come up with your own things when it comes to the workplace. If you make up things, especially when it comes to the workplace, what ends up happening later on, it might come to bite you. You might say something that was not confirmed, and then the boss asks you, who told you to say this? You say, where, where is this information coming from? And you say, oh, no, see, I heard that we were going to be fired, all of us. That is not your portion. Amen? Uh, but the boss says, why would you go and say something like that? And yet we, no one has told you anything like that. Before you communicate anything, don't depend on the grapevine. Every company has a grapevine. Every company has an environment where uh, someone, you know, people are always reading things even without, even without you um necessarily saying it if they notice like for example if they notice that um philip for example is always working with monica maybe you are just colleagues and you work in the same departments but someone else is saying eh, umbe, i see nani and philip and this chick that's not concrete that is grapevine Whatever it is that you discuss, you have to discuss it based on concrete evidence, especially in the workplace. When you're sending a report of numbers, you have to have concrete numbers. Don't make things up. Many of the people who are being uh, arrested right now for, for, for corruption, especially, is they are saying things which are, they're not able to defend themselves with concrete evidence. The evidence is speaking against them. So when you're communicating, speak from facts. Courtesy is another, this one is a big one, especially in the workplace. Courtesy has lost people tenders, has lost company tenders. Courtesy, lack of courtesy rather. Lack of courtesy has caused people to be fired. Lack of courtesy has caused people not to get promoted. Some of us are wondering, how come I've never been promoted? I've been working in this company for 10 years. Maybe it's because you're rude. You know, sometimes uh, you, there's uh, the, the, what uh, HR managers do before they promote someone, or just managers in general, there's something called the 360 approach to evaluating. 360 approach is whereby I come and I interview your, your into your subordinates. I come and interview your peers and I also interview your boss. So your and most people pretend in front of the boss. Most people show the boss that I am the best. But when it comes to your peers and to your those who are junior to you, you are mean, you are rude. So I speak to your boss and the boss says, this person is the best. They are nice. They are polite. When I need help, they're the first people to come. You say, wonderful. You go to the next, the people who sit next to them in the office. You ask them, how is this person? They say, ah, leave that person alone. Who you nani? Better even someone else. They are rude. They are mean. They, they can't even say something as simple as greeting people in the morning. Even the way some of you write emails. And we'll look at that later on. Something as simple as a courtesy, dear so-and-so, or a salutation, good morning. Some people don't have it. Courtesy is very important when it comes to communication. Then 
correctness, correctness and concreteness go hand in hand. Check your figures and numbers. Yeah, those are the seven C's of effective communication. Um, strategies to apply uh, seven C's of communication. First of all, don't get emotional when you're communicating. This is just like to wrap, to hold the seven C's together. Um, emotions play a big part when you're communicating. Try not to get too emotional, especially in the workplace. Try and um, like, especially if someone has wronged you, my advice to you is go and sit down first, calm down. If you are, some people when they are wronged in the office or by their boss or whoever, they go and immediately and they start typing mess or they go to the HR and they, they go and storm the office and try to make things worse. Or do you try to solve things emotionally? Do not communicate while emotional, especially at the workplace. Take time, calm down, take a walk, go out, go to the washroom, wash your face, breathe, count backwards from 10 to from 100 to, you know, to one. And then now come back and communicate effectively. Speaking to, other, uh, to the other person as if you are not angry, don't also pretend you know, take your time and calm down. Avoid the word, the use of the word you. You are always doing this. You are always doing that. It's very accusatory. Avoid it as much as possible, especially in email. Um, try as much as possible to, when you're speaking, don't try, don't, don't speak like you're accusing the other person. Nod your head to assure the person that you had him or her. Like when I'm speaking to you, even here on Zoom, try and nod your head so that I can see that you are, you know, understanding what I'm saying. Maintain eye contact with him or her. Now, the last topic that I want us to discuss is email etiquette, and then we can open the, the floor for questions. I'd like someone to help me to read this email. I don't know if someone is available. Um, who is available? Let me see. Who is available who can uh, read this email for me? Just unmute yourself. Anyone? It doesn't matter who. Anyone at all, please unmute yourself and, and uh, read this for me, please. Anyone? Go ahead. I, I thought someone was about to speak. Uh, Dorothy, I feel like my fellow name mate, Purity, has unmuted herself. Maybe she wants okay. to read it. Please, yes. Purity, go ahead. Yes, let me go ahead. I submitted okay, my expense report last week, and mm -hmm. I still don't have a check back. I always. Can you be a bit louder? Yeah, I always problem receiving my checks on time. Mm -hmm. I know that you have cut off times and I usually make them, so I don't know what is happening. Is there any way that you can notify me? You can notify people when you don't process the, their reports on time. Mm -hmm. Can you clarify exactly how their process works, mm -hmm. as well as the review, as well as review the policy that you are regarding cutting checkers after the mm -hmm. cut off times. I'd like to get my checks, my check posted to me by tomorrow. I realize that GTM stuff, but mm -hmm. there, there might be a better way to handle this. How do you handle checks for direct reporting? Do you have <laughs> do you have the same cut off time? A new process last week. EST direct EST account and paid in paid in. I really don't want to wait another week if at all possible. Please advise. Please don't just give me the typical RF. Yes. Thank you, Purity. Okay. Um. What is wrong with this email? Uh, first of all, what does this T-N-S-T-A-F-L mean? And R-T-F-M? Anyone have an idea? You can Google it wherever you are. You can Google it on your phones. What does T-N-S-T-A-F-L 
stand for. And these days of texting, uh, I think, has caused this. Anyone have an idea? While people are looking at for that, what is wrong with this email? And you, Purity, you did not read the reference for the email, but it's okay. <laughs> screw up. Screw up. Yeah. What is wrong with this email? Yes? Sorry, uh, I think I, I lost purity. Uh, who, anyone else who can tell me what is wrong with this email? Anyone else? Patrick, Kennedy? Language, not official, very rude, that is true. Even just the reference. Imagine if you receive an email written that screw up, and then the person didn't even post, but bother to put a capital S and a capital D. Not official and very rude. This person, I think, was emailing while they were emotional because basically they want money, but the money has not been coming. Any other challenge with this email? Use of emojis, yes. You have to be very careful when you're using emojis, especially in official emails. They actually don't use them at all. Avoid them completely. You know, you, you can think, and then the thing about emojis is, you, it's subjective. Like for example, when the winky face, the eye, the one with the one eye closed, the wink face, one person might be thinking the wink face might be a good job or someone else might be thinking winking is they're hitting on. You don't know, emojis are very subjective. Everyone can read them the way they want to read them. Any other thing, thanks Teresia. Any other? Spelling mistakes, kibao chungumzima, using, again, this is a challenge that comes from texting a lot and, and predictive whatever. You, you just text, you, you, I think maybe they were writing with their phone, I don't know, uh, that's another challenge. The use of caps means they are shouting, yes. You also don't write in red, that's another thing. With the, the caps and the, he didn't use red here, but you know. Uh, so has anyone found the meaning, meaning of T-N-S-T-A-F-L? Niwambie, mchandilipa pesangapi nikiwambia. I'm just kidding. T N S T A F L st stands for. I realized that there is no such thing as a free lunch. Did you know that? <laughs> the next time when you text someone, you can use that. Uh, the, the T it, it means RT is a, uh, for the expression read well. I did. That's not the one. Polycap, you are telling me that one. I didn't know that was what it meant. It meant. I thought it meant that a regular run of the mill accounting response, as in the kawaida responses. But you see, this this is a challenge of using abbreviations. When you use abbreviations, um, it could be read anyhow. Polycap says that RTFM is. And it, uh, whatever for, read the fucking manual. Pardon the French. Okay, this is a challenge. Now imagine if your boss is maybe he's 60 years old and he decides what is this young man saying? And then they Google it and that is the one that it pops up. Looks very bad. There's still other problems. Tell me what other problems are there with this email that we have not picked. Lacks ethics, certainly 100%. There's something you people are not looking at. There's the emails, Hapoju. They've written, and who have they sent the, mess, the email to? Uh, to from so and so, and then CC, boss so and so, and then they've CC'd so many people, as in they've CC'd the boss among other people. By the time you decide to CC all the bosses, that's that email had better be so important that they really need to see it. You, you see what I mean? And usually the, most bosses I find, I have had the, the privilege of working with many CEOs, including Purity. Hi, Purity, my boss. Um, and I find that most CEOs actually go through each and every email that comes to them. 
us lower people, let me speak for myself, you tend not to read all of them. You look at the, the title and you let it pass. But as a CEO or as an MD or as a boss, a man in general, it is, it's seen. What I find is, they, I'm sure you've heard about this, bosses wake up very early. Most bosses get into the office by maybe, some, some even 4 a.m., they're already in the office. What do they do? Most of them, the first thing they do when they get in the office, they go through all their emails and respond to them. So by the time you're coming into the office at 8 o'clock, you've already seen the responses from the bosses. And then by the time 8 o'clock is starting, now they can go in and sit and have meetings. So now if you send them an email like this, they're wondering who is this. In fact, what ends up happening, they start asking, who is this person? I'd like to see them. They go to the HR manager and ask, who is this person who has sent out this kind of email? I want to see them. And then they just look at you. And then again, you wonder, how come I'm never getting promoted? It's the small things. I like to tell people, what is etiquette? Etiquette is not something you can get arrested for. Use of multiple exclamation marks. Yes, that is also another thing. Th thanks, Teresia. You don't do that. In fact, you use exclamation marks sparingly when you're using when you're writing um, e emails. One is enough. An exclamation point in itself is to mean an emotion, like or, or congratulations, exclamation mark. That's it. Already you have shown some kind of emotion. There's something I was talking about before um, I read that. Um, ah, I've forgotten it. I'll, I'll come back to it. When I remember, I'll come back to it. Um, yeah. Any other thing that we have not addressed on this no, email really. before? Uh, you are talking yes. about etiquette. It's not something you can oh, learn. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Purity. Thank you so much. Uh, the thing about etiquette is you will not get arrested for it. It's, there's nothing that you will do which is against the law. Examples of etiquette are you should, like there's lift etiquette. When you go into the lift, the, the etiquette is you go to the farthest corner to leave space for the other people. If you decide to stand in the middle of the lift like this, will you get arrested? No, but it will affect the people who are around you in one way or the other. So the thing about emails, chances are I'm yet to hear someone getting fired because of writing a bad email. Um, it really, it has to be one really bad email for you to have been fired because of it. You probably sent out, I like an example of a really bad email where someone got fired is, uh, I know of an HR manager who sent out the payroll for the whole organization. So uh, it was one of these universities actually. What happened then, the, the payroll leaked. So all the students could see each lecturer how much they made. So all of a sudden they're walking around telling them, Kwendo, you're harassing me for an assignment and my father makes more money than you. That one is something worth getting fired for. That's gross misconduct. But generally, etiquette is telling you that you might not, it's not against the law per se, but it will affect the way you interact with people. So let's look at some pointers on how to write good emails, and then we can open up the floor for, for questions. Let me see my time. Okay, we are in good time. Email etiquette, it's tip number one. Always use appropriate greetings proper salutations. Uh, dear, so my boss always used to tell me, my former boss always used to tell me, start every email with dear so-and-so. That is the proper way of doing it. Um, avoid doing things like, hi, hey, what's up, unless you are that close with the person. But you know, this is a tip I am giving you. Every email, like um, I, I, your company, do you have official email addresses? I want to assume that you do. Like, for example, if it is, uh, if, if someone is, say, working at Safaricom, this is uh, Teresia at, at Safaricom, that, that's an official email. As long as it has the official company, whatever, the, the, comp the official company con attached to it, then if, for example, you are to leave the company. If the company decides to go into your emails, they are allowed. It is property of the company. So now, if you make the mistake of, of emailing someone within the company and say, discussing, 
lewd things via email saying today you looked really hot you know now i don't think you would do that but you know there was a time when email was the only way to reach people in the office they, there was no we didn't have smartphones and stuff so you start sending someone an email i like i really like the skirt that you're wearing today or how is you know just strange things via email one day if the boss ever decided to go into your emails and go through what is discussed there you will get really embarrassed and again you will be wondering how come i'm never being invited to many of these meetings anymore probably that is it you've left a bad taste in the mouth of your boss number two only use shorthand if you know your recipients remember these uh, the ITFM or the, there is no such thing as, don't do that. Uh, avoid it altogether. Actually, for me, as a rule, what I do, even when it comes to texting, I try not to abbreviate because I find that the more you abbreviate, the more you, it becomes a habit. So when the, the time comes that you really want to be official, it, 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 it seeps in. You don't know how, but it trickles in because you're so used, used to seeing, instead of good night, you see, G, you write G-N-I-G-T. It seems like a joke. Or good morning, instead of writing good morning, you put G-D morning. When you're texting, it's fine, but after a while, even when you're writing your emails it trickles in somehow so that's me that's my, what i do as a rule of thumb even if you ever see even an sms from me generally my words are all in full i don't abbreviate because i never know eventually who i will be texting and it will be someone who is big uh, who is senior and i want to make the best impression at all times we don't I, I, we have time i mean one day maybe one of these classes we will have time and discuss personal branding but when it comes to personal branding such things count you want people to know that this is a very official person that this person when it comes to being uh, to things of work they're very official i hope i'm making sense be wary of using humor or colloquialisms and you know like kenyan kenyan humor uh, saying things Right now, the guy who is trending, this guy who says, Oli skia wapi, <laughs> everywhere you go. It's, if someone says, there's a joke I was seeing on, on WhatsApp, someone says, Kanusha is sentenci, mluya alikula, alitupa ugalinusu. I hope everyone here understands Swahili. I hope no one is floating. Basically saying, um, um, anyway, Someone help your neighbor to understand what I'm talking about. And then, of course, everyone responds there and says, Now, on your emails, because you are in the same group and you sit in the same office, someone asks, says, to Melipwa, our salaries have come in. And then everyone goes responding, It's just, it's a bad example. I know some of you are looking at me like, are you crazy? But I'm trying to make a point. Be careful with humor. You don't know who might jump into those conversations. Um, there is a company that we were training once, I remember. Um, Purity knows who is the company I'm talking about. And a group was made for, a WhatsApp group was made. And what happened, one of the bosses saw the, the employees somewhere on during the weekend so they come on to the email they on to the whatsapp and says some of you have i have spotted you getting drunk etc 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 that's on whatsapp the same thing applies even to email etiquette you never know how the boss will be able to get a hold of those emails as you're communicating so you just have to be careful or you never know who has like you might send to all and then someone replies and by mistake adds on the boss you know so you have to be careful consider the purpose of the email be care what what are you emailing about is it a serious matter actually try as much as possible to, to when you're, you're writing the email 
um, oh, different. Okay. Someone mute, please. Okay, when you're writing your email references, try as much as possible to make them as short as possible, straight and to the point. Think before you put your smileys, I think that we have discussed, the emojis, the face, avoid putting them there. Don't hit reply, reply all or CC everyone. No one has time to read that whole thread. Try as much as possible. And uh, unless it is like some, maybe the HR has sent out um, an email. So we, unfortunately, we have lost a member of our family. Now we reply and say, my condolences. There you can reply everyone and say, my sincere condolences. Or maybe someone has been promoted. You can reply to everyone and say, congratulations. But other than that, avoid CCing everyone. Reply in a timely fashion. Also, I would add to that replying in a timely fashion. When you reply, oh, try, as much as possible, try as much as possible to reply to every email. It's a good practice. Reply and say received with thanks or noted something. It's good manners whenever you receive an email to respond. Many people avoid replying because they feel like if I respond, then I'll be held responsible for that email. Yeah, that's why you are that job. Every, every email that you receive, you are being held responsible for that action. So you might as well respond. It's good manners when you receive an email to respond and say received or noted. Thank you. Something. All of them. Think about where your email could end up. You never know who would get that email. It could even end up with CID. You say, I'm going to kill this person on email, like a joke. Then one day that person dies. Then they, the, the CI come and do an investigation and they see that email of yours saying, this person is so stupid, I'm going to kill him. Just like that, you've caught a police case. You don't want that. Always do spell check before you send your email. Uh, many times, and then don't, don't, don't depend on the corrective, especially Google has it. The, the one that gives you, it suggests for you the one. Don't always assume that the word suggested is the correct one. Um, there are many times when you assume that and then what happens, uh, you, it turns out that it was a word that was rude. So always do a spell check, go through your emails all the time. Every email of, every official email counts. And it's, it's a skill, just like any other skill, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And then, of course, finally, include a clear subject, ma subject matter and don't shout. Don't shout meaning don't use capital letters. Include a clear subject matter and don't shout. Now, in conclusion, as I am winding up, communication is the responsibility for the, for the, the most responsibility of communication is on the sender. The receiver's responsibility is to decipher whatever it is that the, the sender is sending out. If I say, sit down, if I speak to a group of toddlers and I tell them, pig amagoti, and they all start hitting their knees, whose fault is it? Is it the children's fault or is it my fault? It is my fault as the communicator because I did not package the message in a way that was, um, is easily digestible by the other person. So whenever you are sending out communication, understand that the action that comes after that communication depends on you as the sender. So you have to be very aware of yourself, be critical of yourself, not in a bad way, as in analyze everything that you do before you send it out. Analyze everything you say. I know some of the best communicators, like Obama, for example, before he would go out and do a speech, he would actually rehearse in front of a mirror. He would actually write his speeches and read them. Someone else would read and say, maybe you should not say this. Maybe you should say this. Because every word that, and that, I think that's the biggest difference between Obama and Trump. Trump, he's given speeches. He says, well, okay, speech, I know what I'm going to say. Then he goes there and he says, 
We are the best. We are. I am the best president. They love me. He is, as in, after he has finished talking, you're wondering what has this guy said. He's managed to insult people, etc. But he's not said anything of substance. Be critical of what you talk about, what you send out as a communicator. Be careful because, especially in the workplace, you never know what might be holding you back or what might push you forward and help you to grow in the organization. So, on that note, I would like to open up for questions. Um, yeah, I have actually uh, gone very quickly through the topic. Um, we can go through a question answer session. Uh, Purity? Yes, Dorothy, uh, I'm, I'm here. So thank you very much for that very insightful session. Mm -hmm. I believe, or I hope we live here better communicators. Mm -hmm. So uh, at this point, I think we'll open up the floor to anyone who has any questions in regards to communication. Or maybe someone to, or they tell us what are some of the challenges they are facing at their workplace in matters of communication. Then we see how best we are able to tackle up that discussion. So the floor is open for now. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm receiving a message from uh, Fidelis. They're mm -hmm. saying uh, they're experiencing makeup issues. So everyone at the, at, at the headquarters is offline. So, do we give them a few minutes to receive the able to sort out their, their network issues? We can, but I already see some questions coming in. Um, okay. All right, let's handle okay. them. Let me respond to one while we wait for them to come. How about that? All right. Um, can you advise on the yeah, element? That's okay. Elements of communication and their percentage. The elements of communication, that's a very good question. And their percentage. Polika, please be a bit more specific on your uh, question. You can unmute yourself and ask. What do you mean by the elements? My understanding of the elements is the sender, the receiver, the feedback, uh, the coding and encoding. Is that what you're talking about, Polika? Jumbo, hi. Jumbo. So mine is regards to elements like um, listening, like um, written, like uh, talking, mm -hmm. such. Okay. All right. Um, the, the elements, what I know is the verb, there's verbal and then there's nonverbal. I was hoping not to get into all of that because of time. But there is verbal and nonverbal. With nonverbal, there is um a lot there's the signs and you know it, gestures there's the facial expressions etc we are told that most communication is actually more nonverbal than verbal we actually hear more when people are not talking than when they're talking in fact the people who talk the most are actually saying the least i find in my experience. So 75% of most communication is nonverbal. Then there's the verbal, of course, and the, you know, the, the, these others that come and add on top. So if you're looking for a percentage, I will say nonverbal is 70, 75, and verbal is 25 or 30%. I hope that has answered your question. Has it? In terms of polyca, okay. We 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 also did not mention the main elements. I thought it would be a bit redundant to go into it. I wish this is where I miss having a whiteboard. Maybe I'll invest <laughs> one very soon. Uh, the, the elements: there is the sender, there is the receiver, and then of course the main ingredient of communication is the message. Without a message, there is no communication that is going to occur. And then 
the sender has the responsibility of encoding the message, packaging the message in such a way that the receiver can decode the message and give adequate feedback. If all of those are not working in sync, what ends up happening? For example, if the message is not encoded correctly, what happens? The receiver receives a distorted message. That is where we see all those distractions happening. And what happens after the, you receive a distorted message, you give incorrect feedback. So it's a, it's a cycle. The cycle, the communication cycle is something that we also did not mention at the beginning. I hope that also adds to the response. Can we get a copy of the notes to our emails? Someone is asking, Purity, is that possible? Yes, yes, that's very possible. Okay, and so after the session, uh, I believe everyone was able to sign up for the for the class today. So we'll share it to the email that they, they used to sign up for the class. Okay. Any other question? Has the issue been resolved? Um, I yeah. doubt if Fidelis is on the call. Uh, oh. Let me just check. Okay. Uh, Fidelis is not on the call. I think that is the team that was that dropped out. Okay. Yes, but we can still take a few more questions before we close the session. Okay. If there are any. I'm watching the chat like a TV, waiting to see. <laughs> So please send any questions, regardless mm. of how you think about it, mm. or any clarification you would want. Mm. Okay, what is the difference between hearing and listening? Uh, th th that's a good question. Um, hearing is where you just receive the information on your, you know, you, you the physical act of receiving sound heard. Yes. yeah someone said something and you heard someone saying something so you can say mm -hmm. i had a noise or i had people talking i had people chatting i had the conversation but listening is where you actually digest what is being said listening is where you you take the information you digest it in a way that you are able to process it adequately like um, if i come and i tell you let, uh, we're a very good example corona time. every day every station that you see right now is at is uh, just hold on eh? okay uh this george george your mic keep turning on all the time can you just mute it all right you can continue okay um a good example on the TV stations right now, everywhere is talking about steps to take during this time of Corona. Many of us have heard those things. Many, 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 many of us, but very few are listening. How do you know that people are not listening? Many people are actually not wearing their masks. Many people mm. are still are not washing their hands. Uh, there was a study, and don't, don't shoot me, there was a study that was done that where they were saying men don't wash their hands. I, I don't know if that is true. I don't know how true that is. But I will also say that Africans actually wash their hands more than people in the West. You know, an African can't go a day without touching water at some point. You know what I mean? If you go to the West, <laughs> they have washing machines, they have the, dishwasher, the, the dishwashers, ETC. So you find by the time someone actually touches water, it's, the day has gone by. As an African, before we eat, generally as a, a culture, we, because culturally we eat using our hands, we generally, our hygiene is better. Maybe that's the reason why we have not been as hit by the West. That is speculation. So hearing is where you just hear the sound you receive the sound, and you, but listening is where you process the sound to give adequate feedback. 
I hope, Philip, that has answered your question. Teresia is asking, on communication, what are the major steps that leadership should do, should take to communicate to their people? That's a very good question. Um, remember when we first started, when we started this trade with this class today, I spoke about the role of communication in an organization. The role of, of communication in an organization, I said, like the lifeblood, it flows, it carries information all through the body. Blood is like, uh, blood is like the carrier of, is like the equivalent of communication in an organization. Now, if this is the case, then leadership is the head. Your brain, the brain of the organization, management is the head. If communication is not reaching the brain and passing the brain and going to the rest of the body, what ends up happening? For example, if information is not reaching the head, the brain to the leg, what happens when you're supposed to walk, you will not be able to walk because your brain is not able to send a signal to your legs to move. Or if, uh, Communication is not passing from the brain to the arms, for example. If you want to eat food, you can't do it because the signals are not getting to your hands. I, don't, I hope I'm making sense. Now, as a leader, you, as your brain, you need to know where the break in the communication is happening. You have to be very in touch with the body. You have to be very in touch with every department constantly be getting information from every side and giving feedback. The challenge with many leaders is you just receive information. Most CEOs and business general managers, etc. they get email after email, report after report. But the challenge is many of them don't actually take time to sit and read the reports. The small fine print, hourly reports, you know, daily reports, etc. Or they get the information and they don't give feedback and say, uh, thank you, I received it. What was happening on 21st? How come our sales were low on the 21st? Or how come so and so did not show up to work on this and this? So as a leader, you constantly have to be in touch with every department. Encourage a culture of communication. You know, it's all, communication can also be a culture. How information flows in the company. There are some companies where the boss or some leadership styles, you know, the boss thinks that I don't want people to see me all the time. I'll give you an example. I don't know. I, I like using Safari Combo because everyone knows about it. The leadership styles of Bob Colimo and Michael Joseph are very different. With Bob, the way he was talking, he used to interact with people. He used to walk around the company. Actually, my friend works there and she says when she had her child, Bob actually told her, bring the baby I want to see in the office. Michael Joseph is not like that. Michael Joseph was the kind who would rarely see him, you know? He's the kind of boss who, he's almost untouchable. That's a different culture in itself. So you, you get the, the, the employees start thinking, now for me to communicate, I can't reach the boss. I have to, to stay on my lane. I have to stay quiet. Let me speak to maybe my direct boss. No one else should speak to me. So it's about, it, it rises and falls on leadership. You as the leader, you need to understand what are you trying to portray? What are you trying to, to, to make the organization out to be for the betterment of everyone? I hope that answers the question. Yeah? Uh, one more question here. I'm saying, what? Well, it's a long one. In specialized environment, we have the various flows of communication. How are they coordinated to ensure the message is delivered and interpreted as intended by the sender? What are the do's and don'ts? And how can it be optimized, especially now when the non verbal cues might not be directly interpretable and the digital communication? Edwin, that question is so heavy. <laughs> You've asked several questions in one. Now, let me see if I can break it down. In a special I do it, your voice is breaking. Oh, sorry about that. Now? 
Uh, I think uh, continue. Uh, I want okay. to say it. Uh, um, yeah? I think I was moving around a bit. Is let me stay mm -hmm. stagnant. Okay. In a, I'll read the question okay. again. In specialized yeah. environment, we have the various flows of communication. That is true. Every organization has its flow of communication. The flow of communication goes hand in hand with the culture of the organization. How easily is it for people to communicate? Is it a friendly environment? Is it a tense environment? So that we have established. How are they coordinated to ensure the message is delivered and interpreted as intended by the sender? Bear in mind, what was the last thing that I said? I said, how efficiently a message is received depends on the sender. As a leader, for example, if I want to tell people that, I want to encourage people, for example, in the, in the company, we have been doing a good job. For example, it's difficult times, we have been doing a good job. What is the best way of me telling people that? Give me an example. I want to give people encouragement. What is the best way for me to communicate that to my people? Anyone with an idea? Well, one video would type. Someone mute, please. Um, one CEO might decide, let me send out an email. So you broadcast, you say, right? An email from the CEO and everyone gets it. Some might be encouraged, some might be encouraged. Another CEO might decide, because I want people to be encouraged, I, am, I want to give them a bonus at the end of the month. That's another communication. So, so people will feel, ah, I felt it. This is tangible. I felt it. Another CEO, as in every leader, has to, because you know your people, you will find a way which is most effective to communicate with them. I have found, for example, in, in some companies, depending also on the level of the employees, uh, there is a company where, and I think there are many companies that we have gone to, especially the industrial ones, purity, where... Yes. Um, the, at the end of the year, you want to take people out to go and play. The company yeah. spends money and pays for them. Then the employees come and say, that money that you had spent, why don't you give it to me? Eh? Imagine I come here and I eat nyamachoma and I play games and then I go home and my wife and children have not eaten. You will not have made them feel motivated. You will not have encouraged them. So what happens, such people, you go at the end of the year, you do a shopping, you buy unga, rice, cooking oil, ETC, you put it together and tell them, this is how I appreciate you. So it's all about the sender, the person who is sending out the message. You have to understand the people who you are speaking to and package the message in such a way that they will receive it in the right way. The same company, by the way, they might decide to do that and then they take all the senior managers out for dinner at Kempinski. Now the senior managers mm -hmm. will appreciate that better than the unga and the rice ETC. So it's you, the sender, who is supposed to be able to learn your, your, your audience and be able to package it well. Uh, what is the do's and don'ts and how to optimize, especially when uh, I think that understand, basically, uh, that's what I've said. Understand your people. Understand the people who you're speaking to. Um, before I, I, with this class started, I actually went and I had to go through your website and understand what it is that you do. So I know that if I, the, the way I'm speaking to you now is something you can understand. There are some places if I was teaching them, I would have had to use different kinds of examples. I hope I've answered that question. Um, it was a very heavy one. Hey, Dorothy, maybe I just add a point. As, yes, uh, um, Especially when you talk about digital communication, I think the answer is in the simplicity, you know. And mm -hmm. as you had mentioned earlier, like you don't have to write a five page email, 
<laughs> two lines yeah. of an email could as, as well answer the same uh, uh, or raise or communicate whatever you wanted to communicate. So I think like, uh, especially now that we're not even meeting people, the solution is almost in the simplicity of things. How simple are you able to break down this kind of information to be received by by the people you, you are sending the, the communication to? Because also avoid being vague or assuming like people know what you are talking about Mm. So still go back to the five W's and H. Mm. For this, uh, for this uh, session, I doubt if we you have prepared something on smart, uh, smart communication, being specific, mm. measurable. You you know, yeah. such that you 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 just get straight to the point without too much details or assuming like people already know what you're talking about. Just mm. to make sure that this. The, whatever you're communicating is as clear as possible. I hope mm -hmm. that helps. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, the mm -hmm. yeah. is asking, what is the impact mm -hmm. of personality, introvert, extrovert to effective? You're talking about mm -hmm. temperaments. Yes. Um, yes, of course, we all communicate differently, even without considering temperaments, although temperaments are a huge factor. Um, I, I hope it, it was not part of what we were to discuss today, but I hope we know what the, the four temperaments, the cholerics, the sanguines, the stigmatics, the melancholics. Every trainer uses different. These days, it's not just those words. There, there's the, what are the ones that you use for what Briggs? Uh, there's uh, the? The disc personality. Yes. Uh, what are those ones? There's the four... Uh, the D is the most outspoken. Then uh -huh. we have I. The, uh, those are a more of leaders. Then mm -hmm. uh, we have an S. People who like to do like uh, they like to follow procedures, which are also made of like accountants. Then mm -hmm. the C. People who also follow up on policies. Mm -hmm. That so this personality is much easier to measure because you only have to answer about like 20 questions and you get your personality yeah. maybe that is something we can share with them they and do it at their own time yeah. yeah but to answer thanks for that uh, to answer your question polica personality definitely has a lot to do with it extrovert for mm -hmm. example my myself and even purity is an extrovert i would like to say <laughs> Uh, we are more, we speak, you know, I, I, I use my words. If I feel bad, I will say it. I'm not the kind of person who will, you know, even purity, if she's angry at something, she will speak up about it. With introverts, you, they, they'll be dying silently. Then later on, one day, the person leaves the company. You wonder, I thought this person was happy. When you go and speak to them, they say, ah, me, I, I just couldn't handle it. And you ask, why didn't you say something? They say, well, me, I don't know. I'm, I'm not like that. Me spending subwa watu. I don't like disturbing people. So certainly, personalities have a lot to do with how we communicate. And I, I think I remember... At some point during today's discussion, I mentioned there are different various factors that affect the way that we communicate. And I mentioned your environment, your personality, your needs, uh, and your experiences affect how you communicate with others. So, Polycap, I hope I have answered your question. Mm, what's the difference between empathy and sympathy? It's simple. Empathy is deeper than sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> sympathy, I'll use an example to explain the difference. Empathy is, okay, sympathy is someone has died. Oh, so RIP. They, they, over the weekend, this past weekend, see who died? King of Wakanda. Eh? Yeah. Most people mm. are like, rest in peace, rest in peace. Others were empathizing. Oh my God, our king is dead. Same empathy. You are literally walking. You're like, what? How is the wife feeling? Imagine this guy. He was diagnosed in 2016. All this time, this guy has been making movies, and he has just been suffering silently. That is empathy. Trying to feel how the other person is feeling. So to answer your question, 
empathy is deeper than sympathy, but they are cousins. They go hand in hand. I don't think it's possible for you to have empathy without sympathy. They, yeah. They Mm. George Nyango is asking nowadays uh, Dorothy question. before you move on I I, yes. I want to 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 maybe like uh, uh give an example for example uh, an example eh? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the workplace which is much better is it being sympathetic or empathetic because as much as they go hand in hand I think in the corporate setup we need to draw a line mm-hmm. like okay this where the sympathy gets <laughs> this is where empathy gets us what do you think you know empathy and sympathy are a personal their personality traits they are, yes. they are not a skill it's not a skill is something that you can learn yeah mm-hmm. empathy is a personality trait meaning there are some people who are better at empathizing than others that is one yeah. number two there is a place for everything it calls for wisdom for example if i come to you and i tell you uh if as an hr manager my child fell sick at night empathy i will feel bad the first 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 two times two maybe three times i'll be like wow to tell me kongonzo but after a while it will get to the point it is affecting the quality of your work so i will call you aside and ask you either take some time for leave you go and sort out your issues and come back or mm-hmm. maybe you might have to just step down because we need you here when we need you as the manager my first priority is the company at the end of the day as long as i am on the premise my first priority is the company whether the company lives or dies so i empathize to a degree that your child is sick but it will get to a point where i will tell you hey okay i feel bad for you but you need to hear you need a receptionist those phones people that business who if you are not there there is no one to pick those calls so what am i to do i'll tell you either take some leave someone else steps in for some time if your leave days are over i'll tell you um yeah it's, they have to let you go but by the time it gets to that of course a lot has gone on i'm just saying you need to use your wisdom to in every situation i hope that answers the question yes yeah it calls for wisdom uh george is asking nowadays information seems to be one way and not two way from policy makers to implementers i agree how can the employee deal with such situations now that information in the suggestion boxes normally becomes stale and seems not effective <laughs> from kenyatta <laughs> that's a good one do you want to purity do you want to answer or i, I can say something about it just take it up and then i'll, I'll take the last bit it's it's a big challenge you know the, how our country is governed is and it didn't start with our present president it started way back where the president is there and then the rest of us confused mm-hmm. one rules we just we survive somehow i have no control we have no control per se over the man at the top not really once we have picked him he's there there's really not much else we can do and except the next election we listen to this this is why the change is important and this is why i was i was actually very disappointed during the last election there was supposed to be a debate a presidential debate remember and the president didn't show up who should raila showed up and I, i was disappointed in the sense that this was our chance to see our pres, our prospective president in action let him come to us and tell us this is what i'm going to do but the guy didn't even bother to show up to the presidential debate i thought that was very unfortunate what i will say to you especially when it comes to leadership is learn your boss i think i don't think you're speaking about the president per se i think you might be just talking about something else you're speaking in code wink wink i have picked up on your code 
Um, <laughs> what I will say is, learn your boss. At the end of the day, you have to adjust to the boss. Or if you are the one who is the boss, adjust yourself. Make sure that you're not the problem and you're the one who is the solution. But if your boss is not this part, we are only responsible for our actions. At the end of the day, if I come to you and I ask you, did you do what you were supposed to do? Yes, that's the most that you can do. I have no, even me as a trainer, I have no power. Even if the, 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 the MD or the CEO was in this training, I have no power to go to him and tell him, you're not communicating to your people properly. Start communicating. <laughs> I, I have no power to do that. The only person who has that power is the boss himself. So what do you do as the person who is following this person? Do your part. This is the corporate world. You do your part. And try as mm -hmm. much as possible to learn your boss and be on the right side of the boss and work things out the best way possible. If, I, if there's anything I wish for people in the corporate world or in life, it's wisdom. Because yeah. wisdom teaches you when to speak up and when not to. How to navigate all of these things. There is no manual on how to and not to speak to the boss. There's this book that came out some time back, 48 Laws of Power. I don't know if some power. of you... Yes. One, if... <laughs> to be completely honest, if you read that book, it can even turn you into a... It can turn you to a very wicked person. A very cold and wicked person. You will get what you want, but it can turn you into a very wicked person. One of the laws of the 48 Laws says, never behave like known more than the boss. But in that book, that's what it says. Learn to be accommodating of your boss. Eventually, these things come out. I don't know if I have answered the question, George. Yeah, it's a very good I, 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 I think you have, by fine large. Uh, but also, I think it, the point ends up at the, the culture you've created for your own organization. Yeah. You know? Because I know there's some companies or organizations uh, the leaders really want to hear what the implementers are saying for it to, to have longevity of the organization. While others, I know there's a culture like the bosses, is, is, they start and end every conversation. So I think it's just a matter of culture. And uh, people who are in charge of culture, actually, I think it's both the implementers and the leaders so at one point, maybe when you're doing, uh, I don't know if you do town halls for your organization. Town halls are also like monthly meetings or something like that, such that at, during those town halls, you can actually come and talk and say, accept as employees, this is what you feel about this particular decision or so. So that point of, of, of leaders and implementers having a one-way communication, I think it all ends up as culture. Yeah, okay. Back to you, Dorothy. Thank you for that. Um, empathy at yes. the workplace is more feasible. Mm. Okay, <laughs> well, there's a place for both. Yes. Yeah. For, for both empathy and sympathy. Yep. Okay. Any other all questions? Right. I don't think there is any other. I think that is it for that. Communication is a very one. People have degrees and MBAs, a masters in communication. <laughs> so we cannot finish everything about communication here. I'm about to go and teach another communication class just after this on writing and editing. So it's so it's wide. We can't finish it today. But if you get grasp the things we've spoken about today, at least you're corporate life will be easier at the very least. And then the other things will flow time. So thanks for the time. Back to you, Priyoti. Yes. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Dorothy, for your time. I believe it was a very interesting conversation, especially the question B. Uh, all of us have, I think all of us had an opportunity to ask as many questions as we could. And we mm. hope this is the beginning of a conversation in your organization when it comes to communication, you know, because I believe this will be used as a reference point 
in some other discussion saying during this training, uh, Dorothy of Unity said uh, this event is about communication. And so I wish you all the best as an organization when it comes to communication. And I hope if you have any questions, feel free to bounce them off us. Uh, uh, Dorothy, you just have that slide for contact details. Oh, I do actually, just a moment. Sorry. So, uh, as she puts the, 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 the slide for our contact details, feel free to reach out to us at any time. We are happy to support you in this journey of communication. And I hope um, I will be able to make more of you in the coming series that we have, we have, uh, we have in plan, uh, we have in place. So thank you very much. Uh, do you still have that contact or I can just give it out? Uh, it's here. All right. All right. Those are our contact information. You can drop us an email at uh, info at rts.ke. Or give us a call or WhatsApp uh, on uh, 0715 or uh, 0784-989898. Also, uh, follow us on social media, see what other trainings we are doing, not necessarily for Q sourcing, but what we are doing for the general public. Uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, also, we do webinar series. So just follow us on social media and just see what we have in place. So I think at this point, I'll give it back to Delhi to, to, take, uh, to help us close this session. Thank you so much. Delhi? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Fidelis. Purity, can you hear me? Yes, we yes can. I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank you once again for the two almost two hours session on communication. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I hope everyone has noted uh, your points. And we are uh -huh. going to is going to apply, or we are all going to apply what we've learned today. Yes. And may uh, purity. Yes. Uh, I understand you've already recorded the session for maybe those who would like yes. to go through it. Yes. Uh, kindly share it with me after this. All yeah, right. Thank you so much. And thanks, everyone. All right. Welcome. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I think that marks the end of this particular session. Uh, we hope to hear from you soon in case you have any queries on this particular topic or any other topic. We are happy to assist. Uh, other than that, so much um, from myself and Dorothy. Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the, the rest of the day. Uh, continue keeping safe keeping distance, wearing masks, washing your hands, and God bless you all. Thank you. Thanks. See, Misha, we can leave the meeting now. Yes. Hmm? Yes, we can leave the meeting.